Today we're going to dive into a box that I bought online for $118 and it's got 19 cameras and camcorders in it. This is a floppy disk camera. So this is the memory type that it uses. I overpay on this lot. This is just like pure plastic. Just, I mean, let's see how we do. Actually, I'm gonna open it from the top here. Oh, that's what it looks like on the inside. I'm gonna go ahead and set it on the ground here so I have a free table to work with. And we'll just pull them out one by one. I know there's some cameras that are not very good. In fact, there's some cameras that I recall from looking at the auction pictures that aren't even relevant today. And there's a mixture of both digital and film products in here. So let's jump in. We've got a GEC 1033 camera. Uh, I've sold this camera before in a different color, I think. It's just a very basic AA power digital camera. We'll open it and see what it looks like inside. It looks pretty good. I don't see any corrosion in the AA battery tray. I've got some AA batteries here. The batteries that I like to use are Amazon's AA batteries. Uh, I buy them in 300 packs and they last me a long time. Uh, normally I buy a 300 pack every month or so and it comes out to about 22 cents a battery, which is pretty affordable. One thing you want to stay away from with AA batteries is the dollar store batteries because they're really weak and they often even have a hard time powering on a little simple digital camera like this. So you can see I powered it on. It does power on. Makes a cool noise too. Memory full. Okay. Yep. Got a lot of pictures on it already. So normally the first thing that I do when I go in to a camera is go into the menu and just format everything. I'm not going to be like Robin Williams and whatever that movie was where he's basically a voyeur and lives through the people's film that he develops and looks at all of their pictures. It's really creepy. So this camera is in perfectly fine working condition, probably good. Um, let me pull out my handy dandy cloth. I'm in the middle of testing a variety of cleaning sprays and cloths because my favorite brand of cleaning cloth must have changed their, their makeup of the cloth they use because now it leaves a bunch of tiny little microfibers on the lens and it really bothers me. So I'm in the middle of trying uh, a bunch of different cleaning solutions and once I have gone through everything. I hope to post a video about it. See, look, we went from a dirty LCD, this cloth actually works pretty good, to a really clean one. Just drying right now, that's why you see a little bit of black in there. 10 megapixel camera. Uh, this one is probably going to sell in the neighborhood of $30 to $35 when I put a memory card in. So camera number one, GEC 1033. About $35. Okay, we'll put that one down here in the working pile. Camera number two. Don't even see a brand. There is no brand on this camera. Not anywhere that I can see. It says digital lens 8.15 millimeter f3.0. That's that's it. Let's see if we open the battery compartment. Yeah, not even any uh, any brand inside either. So this is known as the nameless camera, the camera that shall not be named. I'm going to try to charge this and see if I can get it working. But even if I get it working, it's probably only worth 10 or 15 bucks. Sorry, camera that shall not be named. You're not worth very much. So we're not going to add that one to the overall value total just because we don't know if it's working. And even if it is, it's not worth very much. Moving on. Moving on. Okay, we've got an old case here, and I see a Sony, a Sony camera strap hanging out there. Oh, wow. That is gnarly looking. Gnarly looking. We've got a beat up. Sony Mavica camera with a model number of MVC FD70. This is a floppy disk camera. 
So this is the memory type that it uses. Big ol' honkin' floppy disk. You don't see that every day. This camera is in rough shape. Really, really rough shape. Dirty. Looks like it's got years of grime built up. It's got a bent filter on the lens. Yikes. And it's separated on the side. This does not look promising. There's a Radio Shack battery inside. Um, I've got a battery here. Let's see if I can make this work. Okay, I'm doing the power. The power button is right here. You hold down the button for a period of a second or two and it should power on. In this case, it didn't. So I'm going to try one more battery that's charged. Try it again. Ooh, power's on. Maybe the battery was just bad. Well, oh no, that's not good. We got a big flickering screen there, but this camera is defective. Unfortunately, it's got a flickering LCD screen that's purple. And honestly, I'm surprised it even powered on. So this one is broken, going in the dustbin, unfortunately. So only one for three so far, but I got some cool floppy disks. Okay, next camera. All right, another Sony Mavica, also using floppy disks. I did see both of these in the pictures and I didn't assign any value to these when I was looking at the auction. So really no harm, no foul. Just would be a, a plus if they worked. This one's got a battery already inside. It's a Sony Mavica MVC FD75. Looks to be in quite a bit better condition than the other model. Beefy camera. What is this, a one megapixel camera? Doesn't even say on there. I think it's a one or a two megapixel camera that records to a floppy disk. I've actually seen some pretty cool pictures taken with these cameras. The Mavicas with the floppy disks. Surprisingly decent image quality as long as there's good light. So let's try one of my partially charged batteries and see if it works. No. Yep. Uh oh, making a bunch of... Yeah. Oh, it's got a disc in there. What's a disc? He was having a hard time with that disc. Hey, hot dog, we've got three floppy disks out of this. I don't know if used floppy disks have any value. If you know of anything about used floppy disks, leave me a comment. So we got three floppy disks. This camera is also defective. Uh, just makes a bunch of noise, even with the card out. If this would have been in working condition, I've seen these sell on eBay for $20 to $30, depending on what's included. Um, so unfortunately, no value here either. So we're one for four so far. Getting a bunch of used batteries that don't work out of it. And nothing in there, just a case. Okay. Oh. What we got here? It's got a $1.99 sticker on it. Did I overpay on this lot? We will find out, I guess. So, if this camera recorder is working, it's a Sony HDR CX190. And I've sold a lot of these over the years. Uh, very popular, 30x zoom, uh, decent little handy cam. Takes 5.3 megapixel still images. Just gonna get the sticker off. I have some kind of gooby gone stuff that I use to get sticker residue off of anything that still has a sticker on it. So I'll do that after we're done. I'll just use my finger for now. There we go. So this camera battery is dead. I just tried turning it on. The cool thing about these handy cams is to turn on the camcorder, all you have to do is flip open the LCD hinge. That's why they're oftentimes much easier to shoot if you're just shooting family functions or dance recitals or things like that. These are super easy to use. They don't overheat as easy as a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera. And they're really popular. Sony made a bunch of them. So I'm gonna go get a battery for this, which I have that's charged over in my battery department. And I will be right back. It's tough to get back in here. 
And then the old camera nook. It's tight spot. Okay, I got two batteries just in case one isn't fully charged. Here we go. And we are going to put one in and see if the camcorder powers on. Flip open the LCD hinge. Does power on, that's a good sign. And it wants us to go through the menu. So I'll go ahead and do that and see if we've got any issues. And you can see the image is shot through the camcorder right here. My desk here. And it is functioning. Let's see if there's a memory card. The memory card on this one is actually in the side of the camcorder. So memory card is right there in the side slot. We'll pop it out. It's got a 32 gig guard inside. A little bit of value there. Probably six or seven bucks. We won't add that in the total though, since normally whenever I sell one of these, I include the card in there. I'd like to make it easy for the customers that buy from me. I don't have any of my selling platforms linked to this channel because this channel is not about me trying to sell stuff to any of the viewers out there watching. It's about the process that I go through and what I've developed over the years to try to get value out of cameras and camcorders a lot of people don't give any mind to. So this camcorder does in fact work. Um, it's in good shape with a card and the HDR CX190 used value on a platform like eBay, Amazon, Mercari, Facebook Marketplace, you're looking at anywhere from 75 to 100. So just on the safe side, we'll go ahead and call this camera, this working camcorder, uh, $75 in value. Put it in the working pile. That's only the second camera of the, or camcorder that's working. Nothing in there. Okay, Ape Tech, kind of flip style, digital camcorder. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, it has a memory card in it though. So that's nice. Pull that guy out. We got a two gig card in there. These are not worth very much. Um, oh, see the, so often what you'll see on this is the plastic degrades over time. And when I just opened one of the slot doors, it just broke off in my hand. So I'm assuming this is also gonna break off whenever I try to take it off. Yeah. So that's supposed to open and close and instead it just flaked off. Not saying it's still not usable, you just now have your USB port and those two other ports exposed to the elements, which isn't ideal. Uh, this guy uses a NP60 battery. And I have a few of those over in my battery compartment area, but due to the condition and this brand, Maybe it was a private label brand for Best Buy? I'm not sure. If you know, leave it in the comments. Um, these are not worth very much in the first place, even if it was like brand new or in super good condition. So I'll, later I'll go ahead and try to charge it and see if it works. But this is something that, I mean, you'd be lucky to get five or 10 bucks out of if it was working. So I'll put it in the, t the save for later and test more pile, but we're not gonna assign any value to that. Hopefully we get to some good stuff here pretty soon because it's not looking great so far. Okay. Ah, oh, yes. Sony DSC W50 CyberShot digital camera released maybe like 15 years ago. Really low megapixel count of six megapixels. It's still a decent seller. Most of these Sony CyberShots on like eBay, for example, still sell pretty good. Especially if they come with a memory card and a battery ups the price a little bit. This one's got some LCD wear. You can see that band across the middle. Normally when you turn the camera on, it won't be nearly as visible. Okay, I opened the battery tray. What do we got? We got a memory card in there and we also have a memory stick. And in this case, it's a one gigabyte. One gigabyte memory stick pro duo. Value on those actually, this is probably worth four or five bucks if you were to sell it standalone. Make sure it goes in the right way. Sony makes a number of different types of memory stick. They have Memory Stick Pro Duo, Memory Stick Pro Duo 2, and then the longer ones, the full-size Memory Stick and Memory Stick Pros. 
lot of evolution in memory cards. As we've seen, we've gone from floppy disks to regular SD cards to now Memory Stick Pro Duos. There's a lot of different memory types out there. And if I have one available whenever I make camera bundles to sell, I do try to include a memory card to make it just easier for the customer to use out of the gate if they don't have one. Okay, Let's see if it powers on with the battery in there. Normally the chances of that actually working are like 5%. It almost never happens. Because a lot of these cameras have been stored for a pretty long period of time. Battery for this over in my little battery area, so I'm going to run over there. I've got a Sony battery and a replacement, uh, what brand is that? Castar? No, unbranded battery replacement. Okay, here we go. Ooh, power's on. Lens extends. Go to the menu here. Go down to OK. And we're shoot. Yeah, we're live. Working. Okay, can you hear that? So this camera's seen quite a bit of use, and when that happens, the lens over time will not perform as smoothly when it's zooming in and out. Now, this lens still works just fine, it's just noisy, and it seems a little bit sluggish, so that's gonna depress the value of this camera a little bit. Normally, in used good working condition, uh, this camera with a battery and the memory card and the charger is probably sell for around 40 bucks now on eBay. But given its condition, I'm gonna assign a value of around 35 if I add in a charger. So th this guy, the Sony DSC W50, we're gonna assign a value of $35 to. Okay, next camera, it's a Fujifilm, waterproof camera. Uh, let's see, model we've got. The Fujifilm XP70. And this is, let's see if we got a megapixel. No, I'm not sure. I think it's like 14 or 16 megapixels. It's a waterproof digital camera. Um, they, along with Olympus and Sony to some extent, and Panasonic are kind of the leaders in this time period's waterproof camera models. Fujifilm actually still makes current waterproof camera models. Um, so there's a lot of these out there, and they've actually seen their value increase a little bit over the last few years. This model in working condition, we'll test here in a second, um, it's worth a decent amount. Okay, so I open the battery door. These have a little twist type, so you push down on the circle button and twist and then open. And when I looked, I immediately saw some corrosion here on the edges. So sometimes this can be cleaned off with vinegar. And I have a video on how to clean. You'll see some corrosion here on the screws. Probably used in salt water and wasn't, wasn't cleaned off properly before it was put away. The USB, however, looks fine, which generally indicates that most of the water that was in here was just around the hinges in the side door, which leaves the prospects of the USB port and the charging port and the HDMI port as working is pretty high. This also has a memory card in there. It's got a 16 gigabyte SanDisk card. And this uses a Fujifilm NP45 battery. There are a ton of aftermarket batteries available for this that fit both this and Olympus as well. So they're pretty easy to find. So I've got a charged battery here. Put it in, close it. Oh, heard of the sound, that's good. And we've got a power on screen here. So I'm gonna go through that real quick. I'm gonna hit okay. We'll hit back and it is working. Let's try zooming. Zoom looks good. Try taking a sample picture. Picture works. One thing I always test on every camera is the flash. Because a lot of times with older cameras, the flash can actually go out. So I'm going to go in and do forced flash. That means no matter the shooting conditions, whenever I fire, the flash will fire. And it works. So this camera is in what I would classify as fine working condition, largely due to the LCD being pretty worn, which is common in Fujifilms. When the camera's on, it's not nearly as noticeable. 
but it does affect the value. Also, the area of wear around the door itself would need to be cleaned or noted in the description if you were to sell something like this, just so the buyer is aware. Um, I've actually sold this camera very recently in similar condition, the XP70. Um, I believe I sold it for around $65, so we will call this value $65 for the Fujifilm XP70. More packing material. Uh, yeah, film camera. Kodak Cameo Motor EX film camera, and I don't think it's a 35 millimeter film camera. Oh no, doesn't matter, does it? Wah, wah, wah. Super corroded batteries. Normally when it gets to this extent, and you can see rust in this case everywhere, this is almost worthless to try to fix because the camera itself isn't even worth that much. If this was in working condition, it may be worth like five or ten bucks. So this is a lost cause. I'm just not going to waste any more time with it and we'll put it in the, unfortunately, the trash category. Ooh, Ooh cool. Canon SureShot Telemax 35mm film camera. And I have sold this model before. I don't do a ton of film, I do some film. And my knowledge of film is mainly more in the point and shoots and then the really popular film SLRs. Just trying to see what kind of battery this uses. I think it uses a CR123 battery, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it does. Okay, I have some of those. Condition-wise, it looks so-so, pretty worn. And a lot of times you can tell the wear from not just looking for consistent wear all around the camera. And in that case, you'll see it. There's some wear underneath the plastic housing on the front of the camera. So condition-wise, this is so-so. Um, got some film in there, too. Interesting. Okay. I've got the battery here. Uses this little guy, CR123 battery. We'll pop it in. And so to turn on this camera, I believe you just open this, right? Yeah. Ooh, that didn't sound great. Quite a bit of noise and hesitation, and there's a fair amount of dust inside of the lens housing area. Ooh. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn it on the flash mode here, and we'll see if it fires. Yikes. Made a noise and then just stopped. Lens gets stuck out. This camera has some sort of lens error, it appears. Now when I turn it on and off, oh, it recessed that time. So this one is gonna require some more cleaning and testing to get it into potential working condition. If I could get this into fully working condition, this camera in working condition with a battery, you're looking at about 40, maybe $50. If it was in really, really good condition, probably 75 to 100, like with a box and instructions. So this camera I won't assign any value to because I had need to test it further. So, sorry little guy. Ooh, no, no. Hopefully some better times here. Not better times here. Ay, ay, ay. JVC GRAX2 camcorder, no battery. <sighs> One of my least favorite units to get. There's no way to test it without the battery. I don't have any VHS playback equipment, so it's hard to see if it works. There's no built-in LCD. So unlike like a Sony Handycam that we get that you can find batteries for and test with LCD, on unless you have like a little TV set up with AV cables it's harder for me to test these it's not something I really enjoy so normally if I get these I'll donate them um, back and hopefully find a home for someone that knows or has more time to deal with these but I would assume that if you were able to find a battery for this and test it and it did work uh, probably what 30 or 40 dollars if you think it's different please leave a comment down below but high eight camcorder or a mini DV camcorder, they'll still have quite a bit of value. 
But these VHS models without the LCD hinge, without the LCD, uh, generally not a whole lot of value. So I'll put that in the reject pile for now. Okay, a bunch of cameras just fell down here. All right, we've got a pink Casio EXZ35. Lovely kind of hot pink color. Uh, I've sold this model before. So this actually uses the same battery as that Fujifilm waterproof camera from before, just in the Casio nom nomenclature. Casio calls it an NP82. Battery swapping. What you gotta do some oh crud. Where'd you go? Oh, got it. Okay, we're gonna take this Fuji and throw it in the Casio to test, make sure it's lined up the right way. Hint, helpful hint. Plus and minuses on the battery connections. Also indicated inside of most camera uh, doors, either over here or inside, would have a plus or minus that would make you put in the battery the way, right way. Okay, put her in, turn it on. Power's on, LCD here. Oh, okay. there we go. We'll see if the zoom works. Zoom works. Cool. So this the camera is actually in decent condition. Casio had a brief run. I sold when I worked at a camera store. We actually bought and sold some Casio before they really stopped making cameras. Decent cameras. Um, still have somewhat of a following. This camera in good working condition, which it is. Although it does well. Let's see. Let's see, this is what the LCD looks like now, and I'm going to clean it real quick and stuff on there. Yeah, see what we can do here. Oh yeah, it does come off, mostly. Okay, see, good as new, almost. Definitely uh, classify this guy as in good condition and this model in good working condition because pink actually adds a little bit of value to digital cameras normally. It's probably gonna be around $35. And lens looks good, cool. So I'll take that. Doesn't seem like much. It's a camera that a lot of people just walk by, but you know, if I can get $30, $35 out of a little camera like this that's nice and light and um, fairly inexpensive to ship, then I'll do that all day long. Moving on, moving on. All right. Saw this one in the auction picture. Not thrilled. Not thrilled in the least. These little Polaroids, whenever they have the silicon plastic case on top, they often get like super tacky and sticky. Like this one's super tacky. Like you can see my thumbprint on there after I just touched it. Ugh. Hard to, hard to get that stuff off too. I'm not going to mess around with this. It's super tacky. I've tried going through the, and cleaning this with my normal cleaning solutions, and it still ends up tacky and kind of icky. That one's going in the trash pile. If this was working and it was in fine working condition, you'd still only get like 12 or 15 bucks for it. Ooh, this is kind of a cool little case. Little Canon case. It's really tiny. All right, cool. Canon PowerShot A470. First thing I noticed, however, though, look at that little indent there. Sometimes that can cause some problems with the lens moving out and extending. LCD looks good. Um, this camera uses AA batteries, it does. Battery compartment looks good. Get a couple dubs here. I call them dubs. Use mostly dubs. Sometimes trips. Triple A's are more for a lot of the cheaper cameras. The non name brand cameras. Okay, so I closed the battery door. First thing I noticed, there's a little bit of a gap there. That can come sometimes cause problems with the camera powering on and actually working, and it'll show low battery all the time. This one does power on. It does not show low battery. We zoom here. I haven't used this camera in a while. Oh, that's how we zoom. 
Noisy little guy. Let's try taking a picture real quick. That works. Let's see if we can get the flash to fire real quick. Yep. Nice. Just needs a memory card. Noisy lens. That little indent that we saw did not affect the lens performance at all from what I just tested. So this guy, in good working condition like it is. So this is this is an interesting camera because I've been selling used digital cameras now part or full time for the last six years. This camera, you basically, like five years ago, you couldn't give away. But now, especially after the pandemic and everything, there was a, still is kind of a digicam craze with the younger, younger generation that's really into older, like low megapixel, lower quality cameras that still take cool pictures, but have kind of more of a vintage retro, early 2000s look. We call them digicams, and this would be classified in that. So this went from like a $5 camera five years ago to now selling for about 50. So we'll assign a value of $50 to this camera. All right, this is one I saw in the picture and I was excited to see. This is an Olympus Infinity Stylus Zoom DLX, 35 millimeter film camera with a 35 to 70 millimeter lens. Lens looks good. This camera looks good so far. And this was one of the things that led me to buy this lot in the first place. I don't do a ton of film cameras, like I said before, but I saw this one and I've sold this in the past. They sell normally really quickly. And this was kind of what made me want to pick up this lot. So it looks good so far. No film inside. I don't see any cracks or issues. This is actually gonna use the same battery um, as one of the other ones, a CR123. It's got an old Duracell inside. I'm gonna go ahead and take that guy out. When you draw this back, the lens should extend. Flash should pop, which it did. I've sold probably maybe like 30 to 50 of these over the last few years. Um, can test the flash real quick. Mm, let's see, I'm gonna turn it off real quick. I'm gonna open that up. So if there's no film inside, sometimes it's a little bit harder to test depending on the camera model. Let's try this again. By taking a picture. You gonna work? Ah, there we go. Sometimes a bit of a delay there. Yep, all right, cool. Clean that lens off a little bit. Clean cloth. Oh yeah, that looks good. Nice. Here's the, the lens. So it looks quite good, actually. Cool. Now this camera, this Infinity Olympus Silas Zoom DLX camera is worth a fair amount. Um, case looks mediocre. I probably won't even actually include that in the, in the listing. But this camera, used in good working condition, with a battery is gonna be worth about $150. Cool. So that right there made up uh, basically the entire lot. And really what I'm looking for out of this, I spent 118 on this lot. I'm looking for probably $300 at least of expected sales out of a lot like this. Um, and the reason for that is there's shipping fees, there's the Whoever site that you're selling on fees that can range anywhere from eight to 15% normally, like through eBay, Amazon, Mercari, it's somewhere in that range, depending on the category you're selling. Electronics normally isn't uh, quite as high of a percentage as something like clothing or apparel or sporting goods. Normally those are in the 12 to 15% range. So you save a few percent by selling stuff like this. 
But normally electronics like this is a lower margin category to begin with. Before I started buying and selling used cameras online, I was a buyer of cameras directly from manufacturers like Canon, Nikon, Sony, Panasonic, Casio, like I mentioned, um, Samsung, and a few others. And our, marg our profit margins selling directly from those brands were amazingly low. We're talking like anywhere from the high teens to really low 30s normally, depending on the model. And that's new. So if you're selling a $100 camera, you know, you're only making 20 22 $25 out of the deal. So was not a very profitable category for the company that I used to work for. Yikes. Yikes. I saw it in the listing and I winced. They call this the camera. Whenever you see a camera that's just got camera on it, you know you're in for a wild ride. This is just like pure plastic. Just, I mean, it weighs like five ounces. I can't, if, if this thing works, I will be blown away. There's some corrosion inside the battery compartment. How does this thing, oh, it's got a, U, it has a memory card port and a USB port. I mean, I'm not kidding. This thing is plastic and it feels like there's nothing inside. Oh my, uh, this is actually kind of exciting. I'm legitimately excited for this. I haven't seen something this, this uh, low quality in a long time. A long time. Make it really hard to figure out which way to put in the batteries. That's a sign of a low quality camera. I hope this thing powers on. I'm trembling with excitement. Power button. Check. Ooh. Oh my. It does power on. Wow. Wow. This thing feels so horrible. It says digital zoom lens. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to put a memory card in here and take a picture with this thing. And then I'm going to include it. I'm going to try to include it like right here. The picture is going to go right here. We're going to see the quality. I think it's going to be awful. Like legitimately awful. This is blowing me away. Again, no brand. Who, know who knows? This is the second like legitimately unbranded camera in this lot. This is the worst feeling thing I have ever felt. This has got to be one of those like Wish or like Alibaba type products direct from China because it, even with batteries inside, it's just it's so flimsy looking. Value, I'm going to give this a, oh yes, we will give this a value. Value of $5. Generous. Generous. Oh, another film camera. This is a big boy. Minolta Freedom Zoom 90 camera. 35 millimeter film camera. I have not sold this model before. I have sold a fair number of Minoltas in the past. Made in Malaysia. I don't recommend using something sharp to remove batteries. Like I am. Although this thing is kind of dull by now. I use Scotty peelers to open boxes. They work really well. Get out of there. Coming out? Got it. Yeah, I don't have this battery. Okay. Uses this like 245 battery. I have to test this later. This camera in tested used good working condition. Um, and it looks to be in good condition. I would give this a pretty high likelihood of working. So I'm going to give this a value of $30, which may be on the low side if it's working. But yeah, 30 bucks on this guy. I've got a couple left. Yep, saw this one in the listing. I've sold a lot of these over the years. 
It's a Polaroid film camera. One step. This one is made in the United Kingdom. The easiest way to tell is just by looking on the back of the camera. Made in the UK. Made in the USA, you'll see as well. These were made, I think, through the 70s and even maybe into the 80s in the United States and the UK. So the newer ones that are made are made in China, and they'll say it either on the front or inside here. So normally I sell these untested because the battery, I believe, is actually built into the film, and there's no film in here. If there was a film cartridge, you, would, you wouldn't be able to see inside of here. So this is empty. I would sell this as is untested. It uses 600 film type. Um, clean it up a little bit because it's got a little bit of dust and grime on it. But you're looking at probably a value of $25 free shipping on this guy. Okay. What we got left? Not much. Okay. It's a Sony DCR DVD 92 Handycam. Must be in decent condition. Good condition, actually. Lens looks good. LCD looked good. Sometimes you'll see hinge issues with these camcorders, like a floppy hinge that won't stay closed just because it's been used so much. Uh, this one opens and closes nicely, normally. A little bit of wear on the screws on the back. Now I just need to go to battery real quick and test this guy. Oh, tough, so tough to get in out of here. Okay. This camcorder originally used Sony NP FP50 batteries but it also works with NPFH50 batteries that I found and used over the years. So we'll try one of those that should be charged. Slide it in there. Okay. I just put in an NPFP50 battery. One of the things that will go out the fastest on these is the touchscreen. It's crazy these actually have a touchscreen. So these batteries uh, are like 10 years old maybe and they don't normally hold much charge. But the camcorder is working. Let's see if that touchscreen works again. If I can find how to get to the menu. There we go. Oh, it is working. Yeah, cool. Touchscreen works great. Nice. Uh, let's open the DVD slot. The open is going to be up here on the top. So this is the DCR DVD 92. There's a bunch of DCR DVD models that are also worth decent money. But one thing you do want to do is check and see if there's a DVD. This uses, I think, like mini DVDs in there. There is. It's a Sony brand. Okay, so we'll turn it back on. And shoot a test video real quick. I like to fully test whatever recording media that I have. So whether it's a floppy disk from the beginning, the SD card, the Memory Stick Pro, um, the Sony in here, just to see if it actually records onto what it's going to record to. That way you can say it's actually tested and working. So I'm going to hit record, which is the red button here. Record. Film, normally I film like 10 to 20 seconds, get audio as well as video. Particularly important if you're playing like mini DV or hi8 tape. Uh, and then you're going to change the menu, which you do by actually weirdly toggling the on and off switch to playback. And you'll see the clip that we just did there. And we will play it. and it's working. So this thing's fully working and tested, just needs a new battery. Once I get a new battery, and I think I have a USB cable for this too. Let's see if this uses. Bundle-wise, this is probably gonna sell in the 50, let's just call it 50 bucks, right around 50 to 60. We'll go on the lower end and say 50. So this is the last product that was in that fairly large box. Now we gotta tally everything up and we'll see what everything's worth. So let's break that down a little bit. Uh, we've got $555 of estimated potential revenue. That's the very top line number. My total cost was 118. So at first you see, it seems like, oh, he's gonna make at least $400 in profit. 
not so fast. Once you factor in that 10 to 12% that I was talking about for the fees that payment processors use, as well as the auction sites that I would end up selling these on, um, you're gonna knock off about, what, 12% of that? So we're looking at cost of $75 for the services and fees that the sites like eBay, Amazon, Mercari, uh, Facebook, etc., would take off the top line revenue number. So that 555 quickly becomes $480 once you take 75 out of it. The second big expense on this purchase, uh, once I end up selling everything, hopefully, um, on all the items that were sellable, uh, looking at my averages across the last year, I'm factoring an estimated cost of around $95 to ship all of those items out. So we're gonna take the $95 off of that estimated top line number as well. And that's gonna leave us, so that's gonna move us down to $385 of money left over. Another big purchase that a lot of people wouldn't factor in is the batteries and chargers that I had to purchase or have available to use in these cameras and camcorders bundles. And that estimate I'm giving at $45. And we're gonna have to take that number off of that top line number as well. And that is going to bring us down to $340. So once we factor in most, I'm not, this isn't everything, this is just the big three. So once we factored in those big three, we're looking at $340. And that's factoring in most uh, expenses that were used for this. Not all, but most. And that doesn't factor in the taxes that I have to pay the government the income taxes that I end up paying on these items. I won't factor that in for now, but it's gonna be around 30% is normally what I would set aside on the items that I would sell. So just looking at the overall gross profit before, ta before any taxes are paid, if we take that $340 number and compare it to 118, we've got an overall profit of $222 on this order. So you don't end up making nearly as much as you think you would, which is why I always try to target for a substantially larger number. My target in this case was 300. Once you factor in all those costs and expenses, wouldn't have left a whole lot, really wouldn't have left a whole lot of overall profit there. So the fact that we got to the estimated number of $555 is greatly beneficial. Once you factor in all of the costs involved in actually selling this stuff, now, some of the ways to save money on this, if you're able to sell locally, then you can save on the shipping expenses as well as the administrative fees from the websites that I mentioned that I sell on. Oh, that was a mouthful, but I hope it was helpful. Just kind of diving into the business that I do, giving you a kind of a first-hand look of how to potentially make a little bit of side money. It doesn't have to be cameras. It can be whatever you're interested in selling. So this was the second video that I've done that was an unboxing video just unboxing some of the larger purchases that I make. I'll link the other video that I made here. And if you haven't seen it, you could check it out. Please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already so you can just get updated if whenever I put new videos out. Bye. Bye.